in and thank you arts and learning for having me i'm excited to be here and talk to you about uh commercial gotta click on this prompt that just came up here um yeah i just want to start off by saying i was a late starter in the commercial business um which is great news i think for a lot of people who are just getting started in their later years in life um i was a dancer dance teacher choreographer still am but sort of started moving into the commercial world when i got real tired and was like how i see people dancing in commercials they look like real people and how do i do that and i looked not too far but um i was looking at agencies and i thought okay maybe this is something i can do i happened to be following an agency on facebook because they were uh my old roommates reps and they put out a little ad saying they were looking for new people um specifically bilingual people um and so i decided to just submit and they called me in and they signed me for commercial work and voiceover work which is something i always wanted to do had no idea how to do it and yet there i was presented with this amazing opportunity and so that's kind of how i got started and here i am now about seven or eight years later and feeling pretty good but you know it was a long process of I didn't know anything and I also felt really behind in terms of what my peers had done or you know people who did theater or acted when they were kids um, but I'm so excited to be here and I've done a lot of commercial work both uh, on camera and voiceover and I'm so excited to share a little bit of my knowledge with you um, because it's good work and it's really fun and if you like acting, um, it's definitely worth your while, I think. Um, so I've done spots for, you know, Target, Fisher Price, Burlington. I've done stuff for Netflix. I've done stuff for Blue Buffalo and Hilton and a bunch of different companies. And one of the things that we have to remember about commercials is that they're generally trying to offer you a solution to a problem, right? And the product is that solution. So whether it's voiceover or on camera, we're sort of presented with these little scenarios where that will be the driving force of the spot. Um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about on camera and then maybe kind of segue into voiceover. I probably do an equal amount, but maybe more tipping over in the voiceover. So um, I also run a uh, Instagram called Women in VO, and that's been happening for about a year. And it's been such a great platform for um, women in the industry. And it's how I've met Morgan and, and a few of the people that I know that will be tuning in. So I'm very excited to continue down that road as well and share the expertise that I have in voiceover. Um, and then Morgan was saying that if anybody has any questions down the line, please feel free to type them in the chat and we will do our best to get to them as soon as we can. Yay. Um, so the first thing I wanna talk about is classes. I think um, when I first started commercial work, I really was jumping into something new and I had no idea where to start. I had an agent tell me, don't take classes because um, I think there's something about the cadence of our voice and our speaking that lends well to commercials because what they're looking for are authentic people and people who are themselves. And as you see in commercials, we get all different types of people. And especially now we're seeing a lot more diversity than we ever had. I remember I, um, I voiced a Fisher Price commercial and it was the first time I think I'd seen a gay couple with a child in it. And it was really exciting to see that. And that was years ago, um, but we've seen so much more 
now. Um, and that is continuously something that I know that agents are looking for. Um, anytime I get a breakdown, it's something that they really try to include. And so that's been really great. Um, but so my, you know, one of my agents had said, you know, don't take classes because he didn't want to erase, I believe, like the grittiness of our regular speaking voice or our regular personalities, which I think is great. However, classes is how you learn how to not only do the job, but how to be prepared for situations that arise in the job, um, which we may or may not know. If you've never been on set before, if you've never been in a booth before, it's hard to just kind of jump in and understand the lingo. Um, if you've never heard, hey, give me an ABC or give me a this and that, um, classes is where it's at. And with the pandemic, we live in a really great time where a lot of these classes have become accessible to us. So I always recommend starting with classes. If you've never taken a class, get in there because now is your time and you can learn from so many great people. There's so many um, great casting directors offering courses or um, there's so many acting classes. I was just telling Morgan that I'm in an ongoing acting class and it helps in whatever situation you're going to be in in terms of your acting whether it's commercial or theatrical it doesn't matter you know acting is acting across the board on camera or voiceover but um, there are specific things that we do for each thing um, when it comes to on camera i highly recommend improv classes i think well and for voiceover as well for me, improv was a thing that I was completely frightened of. Again, I knew a lot of people who did improv and um, maybe were already in some groups that performed. And I watched it and thought, wow, this is amazing. I can't do that. <laughs> um, but I did my best to just kind of open myself up and got in there. And really, there's nothing like making things up on the spot and continuously training your brain to do things like that for this type of work because a lot of commercials are funny. Voiceover can be funny. And there's nothing like being able to slip in a little button in there at the end of a scene or do something that's reactive that you would do in real life maybe, but for you to kind of bring that out, it's just so playful and it really stands out amongst the crowd of, of um, other auditioners, right? Especially when there's me and 10 other women with short, dark hair who speak Spanish. <laughs> and you just kind of want to have some other tools in your pocket that stick out a little bit more. Because um, it's not always about how you look, right? It's who you are as a person. And you're, you're bringing your experiences and your culture and history to the audition as well. So um, improv classes are a must for me, um, especially if you end up doing something like animation, but in commercial too, um, when I audition for radio spots specifically, I like to interject uh, some improv in there and it might not be a big thing. You don't wanna change the entire script, you know, in your auditions, but you do want to just add a little bit of flavor something that kind of adds. And when you're doing your on-camera auditions, it might not be a script. It might be, um, it might not be something scripted. It might be an action that you're doing. The, the text is the text, but you bring the action. And so whatever it is that you sort of bring to the table, a little bit of pre-life and post to the script kind of just wraps it up in a little nice package. And it makes you stand out as a performer, in my opinion. Um, are there any places that you would suggest taking classes either online and, or in person? I took from UCB. I've also taken at Groundlings. I know both of those places were doing online courses um, over the pandemic. I'm not sure what in person is going to be looking like yet, um, but those are kind of staples. iOS, like a lot of um, uh, just you, you can find a lot of classes that are geared towards voiceover improv, 
Um, I don't know any specific teachers, but I do see them a lot just kind of scattered around here and there. But yeah, if you want a true um, improv experience, I would definitely go with either Groundlings or uh, UCB, the Upright Citizens Brigade. Um, and it's a ton of fun. I'm not really sure how it's working via Zoom, although I do know some instructors and they've said it actually works quite well. The great thing about doing things on Zoom, like classes, um, even my own acting class that I'm in right now, is that I have not been into a casting room since the pandemic started. I know some people have, but I have not actually gone in anywhere. So that means most of your auditions are going to look the way they look right now. And your initial um, audition is going to be a self tape probably and then the callback might be on zoom but but what better way to practice these tools than to do them the way that you're going to be showcasing them in your audition so it's kind of great um, that you get to do this you know we're all looking at ourselves a little bit more nowadays with zoom and we'll talk about this later when i talk more specifically about auditions um, but you learn a lot just watching yourself, you know? I mean, sometimes we're like, oh, I don't wanna hear my own voice. Mm, I, I really don't wanna look at my face. But if you just kind of put your ego aside and really watch and listen to yourself, you can learn so much and you can see the things that you can improve on because, you know, you really can. You can really see it like, oh, I didn't like that take. My eye line was totally off or, oh, my voice went really high on this and that sounds crazy, you know, and you can sort of start editing yourself in a way that will tailor to the specific audition that you need it to be. So improv classes. And then lastly, theatrical classes, um, regular acting classes. Um, there's so many out there. I definitely suggest making sure that, you know, it's an established acting studio. It's not somebody just trying to take your money. Look at the other people who are going to that studio. Uh, look at other people, other actors' resumes. Um, same thing with voiceover um, teachers or coaches. Make sure that they're working or they're in casting. You know, you want somebody that is currently up in the biz and also could give you an opportunity or at least has been giving those opportunities to other people so you can understand a little bit behind the scenes of what's happening. Um, I think that that's important, uh, but I, I like theatrical education because for me, like I just started acting, I would say, I don't know, I, I've been doing musical theater for a while, but I definitely didn't do script analysis and there's definitely something there something to be said, especially if you want to do more animation or on camera theatrical work, always take those classes. It is a muscle and you do need to like keep it going, keep those wheels turning. Um, and it's been great, uh, especially for my auditions because everything crosses over. The commercial crosses over, the theatrical crosses over, the VO crosses over into my on camera. Um, and I know we're talking specifically about commercial, work but i think all the education you have every all the background you have um you can bring that to your audition and so the more classes you take the better and that leads me to uh segue into more classes which is do the things that you love for me it's dance um for me it's home decor and things like that music and those are the things that you want to bring because there's a lot of auditions for on camera commercials that are not necessarily for the spot they're personality auditions so if you were going into a casting office let's say before the pandemic they would maybe bring one of you or five of you in at a time and they would put you in a line and they would point the camera at you and they would go okay slate your name um tell me what you love about the holidays and you have to talk about what you love about the holidays for about 30 seconds to a minute and then they go down the line each person or maybe it's just you 
again, here's where your improv skills come in, right? Here's where your, um, if you know what you sound like comes in, um, having confidence and having things in your back pocket to kind of pull out is really fantastic. You don't want to do an audition and you go, well, oh, the holidays remind me of my cat who died <laughs> last year. You know, you really want it to be something fun, something that you really do in real life, but like have those stories kind of pulled out and let your personality shine through. And that's what those improv classes do, but that's what other classes do too. You want to be a person who's into other things. You know, you can't just, how are you going to talk about things that you love to do if there's nothing that you do, right? So I always say, keep keep up the things that you love to do, whether it's art or reading or really anything. Um, and that kind of wraps it up uh, with classes. I know that I've talked about it for a little bit, but I just think it's so important to really um, create that momentum for yourself. It also really allows you to meet other people who are creative. And I find that that's so important. And I can say this a million times over, but with women in VO, I've met so many incredible people just because we share the love of voiceover. And it's not why we're friends. I mean, yes, that's the one thing we have in common, but it's, it's nice to be able to talk about the industry with other really great people and to share other interests. And, and you end up being friends with people sometimes that you've never even met before. And it's really fantastic to be able to connect with people and to lean on people and to ask each other questions because that's the one thing that was missing for me when I learned that I could do this professionally. I also, you know, my, I have a Latino family and no one is in the arts and no one can answer my question. Yeah, right. When it comes to finances and arts, out the window. <laughs> um, but when you are able to find your community and really be able to ask somebody the questions that you need, or at least they can kind of point you in the right direction. It's so, so important. Does anybody have any questions on that or any comments or anything? No? Okay. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was doing your homework. Um, in order to what in order to be on TV and and to be in the voiceover industry, you have to watch commercials and you have to watch television. And I think, at least from when I was young. <laughs> I was just like fast forwarding through every single commercial break, you know, to get to the rest of my show. And now you'll find me in the car listening to the radio and you'll find me watching television and watching the commercials and you watch it. Obviously, not just for fun, but to really take in what's happening right now, right? Because you have to also see yourself in those positions. You have to see the trends that are happening right now. What kind of people do you see? What products are showcasing people like you and that you can sort of lean into, um, you know, as far as marketing goes, you're gonna want to find a specific brand for yourself or a specific look. And it's not something that you make up. It's kind of just the essence of you but the essence of you can be anything, right? But all of us kind of lean one way or another more so. And so maybe you're the nerdy tech person at the office, or maybe you're just the quintessential mom, or maybe um, you're a teacher or a doctor, or maybe you're a high class, I don't know, uh, waitress or something, I don't know. Um, but you want to lean into those things and we'll talk about headshots next. And that's going to be so important for those of us who don't have headshots yet. Um, but doing your homework looks like, you know, watching TV and sitting in the car, listening to your radio, because especially in voiceover, um, those trends, you know, come and go. Right now, I think on both ends, everything is about being your authentic self. They don't want people who look 
and talk like actors. They want people who sound like normal people. And um, it's great because we are all normal people. <laughs> We're all people and we all deserve to be heard. Um, but you want to, when you get auditions, uh, you know, like if I get a voiceover audition for let's say McDonald's or something, I usually go on iSpot, um, which is a website. Uh, I think it's iSpot.tv. It's all the on-camera commercials are in there. So you can, thank you, um, it's in the chat. Um, you know, you type in McDonald's and it'll pop up all of the, you know, running or uh, commercials that have run. And I just watch them and go, okay, let me kind of take a look of what's happening here. What are they sort of leaning towards? Coffee spots, usually people on the go, parents, you know, what's happening um, in this spot? Oh, you know, this is for kids and, you know, kids on the go or moms that are overworked and don't want to cook. And that's kind of how I, I do some of the homework before I do the audition because then I look at my spot and go, okay, look at my sides and, or the script and go, okay, this is about um, a $2.99 deal for a combo that includes coffee and breakfast. And just from that, and again, like I said at the beginning, was commercials are offering you a solution to a problem that you have, right? So if it's a $2.99 combo, coffee and breakfast, we already know one, it's a good deal money-wise, right? So it's people who don't wanna be spending six bucks on their Starbucks coffee maybe, or at least not every day. Um, maybe it's people on the go, maybe they just drop their kids off at school and now they're picking up a quick bite to eat before they have to go into the office. Or maybe it's just a student that's running from one class to another and they have 10 minutes and they maybe live in the dorm and they don't have time to cook or don't have a space to cook right and i let that influence what my takes are going to be like especially in voiceover right because they'll probably say what they're looking for but as a take two which you know unless they say don't do two takes i usually will do and an alternate take might be what I think a college student might sound like, even if they're looking for a mom or something. Um, because again, you'll know that, but maybe your delivery will be different and it'll just be a fresh take, something contrasting, which is important in commercial auditions. You, If you do two takes, you don't wanna do two of the same takes. They don't wanna see you do it twice the same way. They could just rewind your video or rewind your audio MP3, right? You want to do two contrasting takes. So that's kind of how you get into those spots. Um, so looking at websites like that, YouTube has a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Listening to the radio, I know I don't think there's a iSpot version of a, a website for radio ads. Um, it would be cool if they did. But um, yeah, listen out for stuff like that. Um, and listen out for where you fit in right and that's again like if you don't have headshots um or if you don't have an agent this is a great thing to do before you go out to look for those things because you want to be able to pitch yourself as something right you can't come into something or i guess you could but it's not great to come in and be like i could do it all we know you can like of course you can we know that but you know the people who book consistently are people who are like very or a little bit more niche you need to know like who you are you know and what you can sell yourself as um and then along with doing your homework i have um following actors on instagram following casting directors on instagram or linkedin following um people on social media who are in the industry um i like to follow you know, headshot photographers or other actors, um, especially when I know them. I mean, it's obviously great, but um, 
a lot of piece, people will post information on classes and that's generally how I hear about classes. I don't do a Google search. I think that would be really hard to kind of find, but you know, someone will usually tell me or they post like, oh, I took this class at this place and I go, oh, what's that place? And then you look at that place and then you end up finding a really great class. Um, and it's the same thing with people who do self tape auditions. Like I like to follow them because usually they will post things from agents or casting directors and they'll share a lot of great things. Um, when Clubhouse was kind of booming earlier this year, the amount of information that was being given on that platform was insane and um, for free, <laughs> which is so fantastic. And I think people still do cast, like I, I do believe that there's still um, casting directors that are out there doing, uh, you know, room. So kind of look out for that. These are the things that you like to do in the background just to kind of keep up to date um, because it is a fast paced business as we know and um, commercials change all the time. Obviously the great thing about it is that you're never too late to start because they're always looking for new faces. Every, you know, every audition, they don't wanna use the same people over and over again because they're supposed to be everyday people and which we are and so they, you know, they want new people all the time, which is why it's so fantastic. Um, any questions on that? I'll just kind of stop and go a little bit. Great, I talk a lot, so this is great for me. <laughs> uh, okay, so headshots. Um, do you all have headshots? Are you kind of in, in the on-camera game? Are you more voiceover oriented or what's kind of sort of? Are you looking for responses? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. curious to know if if um, if headshots are something that you want to go a little bit deeper. Obviously, we'll do that for the recording, but um, it's I'm curious to know what your um, current situation is. I guess I'll speak on it. Um, sure. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, I have headshots, and I came to this to hear about the voiceover stuff okay, so headshots great. i feel i feel good about That's okay just great awesome yes and i will talk about both because we can also talk about demos as well okay i do have headshots and um i'm more for voiceover but i am interested on on camera as well great awesome yes so the equivalent of headshots to voiceover is the demo reel right and it's the same idea it's something to showcase um who you are and what your personality is uh for commercial i think that is a more important demo to have um first and foremost and make sure that you have a great coach and you have a person that you really trust with your demo um because i think that's going to be, especially if you're looking for representation, which I believe a lot of people are, especially now that a lot of people have gone from on camera to voiceover. Um, it's what you're going to showcase to your prospective um, agents and um, it's how you can find work if you're marketing yourself and you're, you know, sending out stuff to companies to get work. Um, I you know, I still have my demo from a few years ago, so I haven't updated it, but I also really like my demo. So um, I haven't, I don't have the need for it right now. And I do have an agent, so it's not like I'm shopping around. I think if I might shop around again, I might do an update or a refresh, but um, the demo process is really great because you wanna highlight again, who you are and a variety of different work. Um, I think if you go on different agents' websites that you like, look to see who's on their roster, listen to their demos, you know, look at studios um, that teach classes, listen to their demos, see what's on there. Um, for commercial, like with me, I have a mix of spots that I actually did and spots that were scripted for me. 
Um, and I think it highlights the fact that I speak Spanish. I think it highlights um, the mom. I like I do a lot of mom, like young mom spots, both on camera and um, voiceover because I'm a teacher and I've always been a teacher. And I think part of that just kind of shines through in my voice. Um, I work with kids a lot. I don't have kids of my own, but I do have a dog. And again, the way that you speak to kids that you teach, the way I speak to my dog, like these are all things that you bring to the table when you're doing your voiceover work. Um, and so those are the things that you want to highlight in your demo, which is why it's so important to work with a coach because you want them to kind of bring those um, parts of you out. Like maybe you have a young gaming voice like maybe you're like gonna do a taco bell spot because of that right because every company kind of has a different voice that they use and they have a different demographic and i think it's so important to know what your um, bread and butter is like what your wheelhouse is um also there's some classes that i think can help you figure that out if you don't know what that is and i think um the more you can hone in on that um, the better. Same thing with headshots. If you work with a really great headshot photographer, if you work with your agent, they're going to help you pick out, you know, what sorts of looks um, that you need. Um, and then, of course, you can put up those demos on your casting sites like um, Casting Networks now. Um, you can upload, I believe, MP3s. Um, and I don't do pay to play sites, so I don't have too much information on that. I think I uploaded a demo to that, like one of the pay to play sites a long time ago, and then I kind of forgot it was there. But <laughs> um, but I know that you can do that. And I do know that people love doing that and make money um, off of it. And same thing with is it ACX that does the narration um, and you can post your demo on there. Um, so these are how you're going to want to shop around um, for agents with like by showcasing those demos. Um, do you guys have any specific questions on demos or is that something that you've also got covered as well? A headshot question. Okay. What is a median rate for getting headshots and where would you suggest looking for people, photographers specifically for headshots? Um, I want to say it varies because it varies on how many looks that you're going to have. Um, in the past, I have generally opted for like two to three looks. Um, maybe like something a little edgier or artsier and then something more mom. Like that's kind of what I like go between. Um, I don't really know what the current rates are. I want to say I paid like 400 for the last ones I did, but I shot with a much larger photographer and I think I paid 800, 900, and I know it can go way up from there with other sort of big time headshot photographers. Um, look at their work. If you don't have an agent and the purpose of the headshot is to get an agent, don't spend that much money because there's a huge likelihood that they're going to in turn, once you've signed with someone, they will give you a list of headshot photographers that they would like you to shoot with. Not necessarily, they might like your headshots and they won't, you know, they'll be like, great, these are totally usable. but. I've definitely been in the situation where they go, okay, now we want you to shoot with this specific photographer. It just depends. Um, but so yeah, if you don't have an agent and, and the reason why you're getting the headshots is to get an agent, I would say, you know, spend a little bit of money because again, this is your calling card, just like your demo. You know, uh, demos can cost thousands of dollars, literally thousands. And that's great, you know, but I think you can also make do with something that's like a medium price point, you know, a grand or a little bit under would be, I think, fantastic. Um, just because things change so fast nowadays that you might have to update or you might get an agent who's like, hey, I need you to add something or I need you to do something else and you just don't know. Um, 
And again, with headshots, go in with a plan. You know, you can't just willy nilly be like, oh, I'm going to wear this red shirt. Why are you wearing that red shirt? You know, make sure it's a specific look. Otherwise, you're spending money for pretty pictures, which is not what you want. You want, you know, sometimes the headshot you choose, it's not the best photo of you where you look the most glamorous or beautiful. It really should showcase the the um, the character you're trying to embody, you know? So that's that's really important. And yeah, there's just like a huge range of prices, but I would say 400, 500 bucks, unless anybody else has heard different, but that's what I kind of was at, at least for a couple of looks. Um, yeah, and then um, do you guys have representation? Are you guys seeking representation or how's it going in that department in terms of voiceover? I have representation, mm -hmm. but I almost feel like maybe I got representation too soon. Do you know? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I can talk about that later, but I'm curious. Yeah, of course. That. Yeah, totally. Uh, I have rep. Um, I don't go out for any VL stuff because I don't have any VL stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's where, that's where I'm at. Years ago, I did a, years ago, I did a commercial where they asked me to just go in the booth because they just wanted a radio spot. So I was like, Ugh. but yeah, yeah it that's was, how um, you learn, right. And those are the experiences. And, and like I was commenting, like I had no idea what I was doing either. I mean, I started, and this is way before the pandemic. I mean, at least during the pandemic, there's all this information, like get this microphone, get this, you know, ring light, get this, um, whatever, like all these things you can pretty easily find on the internet now. Um, and before I just, I didn't know where to start, honestly, and it felt very overwhelming. So yeah, I started with like a USB mic in my closet, but that's also how I booked my first campaign. And so it's really interesting because now for me, every commercial spot I booked during the pandemic has been record well with the exception of one maybe or two has been recorded in my booth which is my walk-in closet which is treated as a booth um and so the i i feel like there's a different level of expectation than there was before you know because during your audition they're kind of auditioning to see if they can also record a professional spot you know so when you do have an agent or you might be thinking of going somewhere else or you're thinking, how do I even get started? I mean, classes are still the way to go, right? You meet people. This is a business like any other. When I think about what my dance career was like, it just got to a point where people knew me so much as a dance instructor and choreographer that people would just call me for jobs. I never auditioned for anything after a while you know, or I like started working with one theater company and then I would, you know, do one show and then they would book me for the next show and then the next show. And it's kind of like that, um, I think in a lot of work, especially in the arts. And I just think it's important to get to know your people, you know, and to make connections and to really learn about the industry. I mean, I remember taking my first voiceover class and I was like shaking in the booth. You know, you go, oh my God, I practically live in booths now, but just that feeling of like, I don't know what I'm doing is very scary for me. I don't know about anyone else. I mean, it might be exciting for other people, but for me, it was very scary. Um, and I think that making work for yourself is also important. I mean, obviously you can't, we, as, average Joe's, if you will, I'm not making a McDonald's commercial, but I can write a commercial and record it. And I know it's not the same, same, but it is practice, you know, and it is work that you're creating yourself. And one thing that I've heard and, and I try to commit to myself as an artist is that when you're not booking work or like making the money, you need to be kind of creating your own work because it just keeps you in that headspace 
of being an artist. Um, and I know a lot of people can go into that spiral of, oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, I'm an artist and I'm not booking work. And especially with social media, when you see other people booking work and you're happy for them, but at the same time, you're like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? You know, and I see that and I know that other people go through that. Um, so, you know, if you can just take your focus off of that and really continue to work on your craft, whatever that means for you, get in an acting class, take a voiceover class, create your own, you know, Instagram reels. I know a lot of people who do, they'll take a spot and they'll do the voiceover themselves and they'll kind of dub over and then they just say, you know, this is a practice exercise. Like, you know, don't say like, I voiced this commercial because obviously you didn't, but it's a good exercise in um, for you and to hear yourself, um, especially us. I know that the, the voiceover world has become a little bit more saturated over quarantine because on camera actors had a freak out and we're like, what am I going to do? You know, and acting is acting, you know, so it's really great that people are getting into it because there's so many opportunities. There's so many things to do in voiceover. Voiceover commercial work specifically, when do you not hear a commercial? Like there's commercials all of the time in between everything you watch, you know, it's on Hulu, it's on YouTube, it's on TV, it's on the radio. It's, I, I, do, um, I do gas station TV spots. Like, you know, when you're putting gas, the TV is quiet. The moment you put the pump in your the thing, the TV starts to go and it starts like playing things. So there's things everywhere that need to be voiced. And so there's definitely opportunities. Um, yeah, and then, you know, taking those casting director wet, like workshops are also really important because those are the people that are hiring you. And so, making a list of uh, someone who's casting and then asking questions like, do you like improv in your, um, in your auditions? Or do you, you know, how do you like your slate? Write it down and then you know, you know, oh, I know this person likes a little bit of improv. So throw it in there. And then more importantly, not give a sh, bleh, you know, also because at the end, they want you. They want you as the person. They don't know what they want a lot of the times. They have an idea of what they want, but they won't know it until they hear it or they see it, right? And so that's what the audition process is like for me. It's like, what made me laugh or what made me feel something? And then I record that, whether it's on camera or in the booth. And, you know, whether you get the job or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, yes, it matters because we want to get paid, but it also doesn't matter. You know, it's it doesn't diminish your worth because you didn't book something. I hope that helps. <laughs> but yeah, keep working even when you're not working. I think it kind of keeps you in the, the, the acting world. Um, yeah, and let's talk about auditions. Like I know, um, for me, it's really hard to talk about like, how do I know a lot of people ask questions like, how do I get an audition when I don't have an agent? Most of my auditions come from my agents. So, um, but I do know that people do cold emails. They do their own marketing. You know, most people have like an Instagram where they have all their stuff, have a website ready, have those demos ready, have everything at the ready so that when the opportunity comes, you're able to take that opportunity because if you're not ready, someone else will be ready. And then that person will book the job and your experience doesn't matter. Like, let's say you haven't booked something before. It doesn't matter as long as you're prepared to do the work. And the only way to prepare to do the work before you have the job is to take the classes that expand your vocabulary that exercise your mind so that when you do the audition, you know how to read the script and you're happy with it. Because if you're not happy with it, you know, then you're going to go in the recording session and you're probably not going to deliver your best work. 
and that's for on camera and in the booth as well. Um, making sure your setup is good. Um, if you are doing on camera work, you want to make sure that you have a really nice background that's plain, whether that's a wall that's an you know, nice shade of gray or blue or even white, although I think white is a little too light, but um, I have a portable background. I also have a mounted seamless paper that I just bring down and then roll it back up. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it's there and it works and it's nice um, and a ring light and your iPhone or a camera. And it's up to you if you want a nicer microphone to plug into your iPhone or your camera. I don't have it and I've booked just fine. I'm sure I would upgrade once I maybe start auditioning for more theatrical stuff, which is sort of where I'm headed. Um, and then just make sure you're up to date with all your Zoom stuff. Um, and the funniest thing is that <laughs> I, um, after a year of doing Zoom and whatever, I'll get an audition. They're like, please log into Blue Jeans. And you're like, Blue Jeans? Like, we've all been using Zoom. <laughs> Why are you asking me to log into Blue Jeans? But okay, so have it all ready is what I'm saying. And then if you're in the booth, of course, you want to make sure that you have your, your software, your recording software, a nice microphone. You have a nicely padded room or area that doesn't have any echo space. Um, because like I said, for the most part, I mean, they will ask if you need, I think some auditions will, some breakdowns will say, you know, please write down whether you can record from home or you need to go to a studio. Again, like most of them, it's just, you have to have Source Connect which is another subscription that you know and you don't have to have a paid subscription for source connect just know that you might have to get a paid subscription a source connect you know because you can do it the day before and or i think if i don't know how long it takes to process but i think it's immediate um but you do need a device that you would have to buy it's called an iLock that you put into the usb so you want to have all these things on hand because in case you record or you have to have a session, a live session. Now, if you get a job maybe via um, a pay to play site, it might not be a, a live directed session. It might just be you record the spot on your own time, in which case you wouldn't need Source Connect or Zoom or anything like that, which I've also done. Um, when people send me uh, stuff and they go, hey, can you please record this 30 second spot? I will record it you know, if you, I will record a few takes of it that I like, and then I will send them like single lines of stuff just in case they want to cut and paste some things that fit better with their spot. And then that's it. And then the job is done. Um, and then no source connect is required. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, so we have about seven minutes and I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have, because I know we kind of did a mix of on camera and voiceover and if you are more interested in voiceover, um, I do that obviously a lot. So um, let me know what your questions are, if you have any. <laughs> I have one. Yes. Uh, when you were getting started, was there um, in voiceover, were there any classes or any classes specifically that you felt really helped you a lot, either a studio or like a coach or coaches or just was well, there? A yeah. Um, I think when I first started, I mean, I felt so green acting has never been quote unquote, my thing, you know, like, so everything felt new and shiny and great for me. So every learning opportunity is great. Uh, my first voiceover class was with Kalmanson and Kalmanson, which is like an old studio in Burbank, California. And, um, that was the first time I was able to walk into a booth, you know, and record. And that was a great feeling. But um, I took with Elaine Craig, who's who casts a lot of spots. So that was really important for me because <laughs> she's doing the casting. You know what I mean? Like, those are the people you want to learn from. Um, and 
nowadays there's a lot of um there's so many classes um and commercial work specifically i know like real voice la has a lot of really great cheaper classes i'll jump into those workouts sometimes because they're just so fun and so great and the people are great um and um I love, who else do I love? I don't know, I've taken so, so many classes, but there's there's certain like the Voice Actors Network, I think they do um, classes all the time. So I've done that, but I really try, there was a moment earlier this year that I was like, okay, no more group classes. I need to take coaching, like private coaching um, because I was feeling like I really needed someone to like hone in on my skills. Um, so that was really great for a moment, but um, I think you find your right people by looking at what you like and seeing the people whose work you like and seeing what their background is and who they promote and who's on their resume. Um, and there's so many classes, like I said, just be careful that when I look out for someone, I wanna know that they are really in the industry currently and and or are connected to the casting part of it because that's who I want to tell me what they're looking for you know as much as I love taking from other actors um I think a lot of the times you got to go okay well the actor's not going to cast me in a spot so I want to hear from people who are actually casting the spot same thing with on camera acting um, when you're first getting started i feel like anything is good information and like i said the class is not just I, commercial has a lot of improv it to me you know i will throw in stuff like i said in the radio spots um so knowing those improv skills what's too much and what's you know, you don't want to throw in so much in there that your whole spot is like a whole different spot. Like, you know, you don't want to upset the writers. The writers wrote this thing because, you know, they're good at what they do. But to just add a little seasoning in there and sprinkle your there's a bug, uh, personality in there is really fantastic. But yeah, that's when I first started. Um, and since then, I've just taken with so, so many people. And you find like the doors keep opening you know, you, you you see someone on Instagram and you're like, what's that? And then you click and then you click and then you click and you click and you end up on like so many other people's pages that um, have really great classes going on. And especially now you can take classes from people teaching in uh, other parts of the world and other states, which is pretty cool. Cause that was not like, I took um, an animation class from someone in New York who I would not, have been able to take their class from you know yeah thank you you're welcome any other questions i had a question about workouts um like workout groups and such i've heard it i don't really know much about it my agent had recommended but she was really busy so she didn't really go into it but do you pay for them do you like can you tell me yeah that? yeah so um like i was saying real voice la has a workout they have workout their classes essentially, but um, there's somebody leading it and it's, you know, you pay, I don't know, 30 or something. I don't know how much it is. Um, so does the voice actors network. They also do workouts. Um, I believe you have to join. They have like a, like a pre, you know, thing that you have to fill out and tell them who you are and how many years you've been doing acting and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, there's workouts there. I think, um, I'll have to, I don't know, I didn't um, write down any names. I'll have to think about it. But yes, essentially, they're kind of like classes, unless you do something that's peer run. Um, let's say you get a group together with people and you're like, hey, you know, like my acting class, we all get together pretty much every day of the week for free. And we do technically a workout, right? But there are paid workouts where one person is leading it. Everyone gets to read. Uh, they give critiques and that's fantastic. Like, I think money well spent, right? Like, cause you could be doing that on your own, but let's be honest, it's nice to hear other people's perspectives and you're, it's just kind of led. And so you kind of, 
really get to focus on the acting part of it and not so much on you sitting by yourself trying to, you know, <laughs> figure everything out alone. It's always great in a group. And it's great to hear other people work because you'll never all sound the same, even though you might be working on the same spot. It's incredible how many different ways a spot can be read. Literally every single person will read it differently. So yes, I would also recommend those workouts. They're really fun too. It's a good way to try something too that you wouldn't necessarily try for an audition. And it may work or it may tank, but either way, how great. How great that you could just play. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yay. Me, I can't see. Um, anything else? Sorry, I didn't. I can't read the thing. Well, thank you, Tanya, so You're much welcome. for coming. I'm going to pause the recording real quick and talk about a couple of our classes and upcoming events for you guys real quick. Oh, wait, beforehand, Tanya, is there anything that you have going on that we can support you with or promote for you? Um, well, probably not right now. Um, just make sure you follow women in VO if you're not already yes, following. And I'll put it in I haven't time. done anything recently just because the last time I checked in, I kind of wanted to do an in-person meetup and then Delta kind of came up <laughs> and I was like, Maybe it's not such a good idea. So I've kind of been postponing um, that, but I have actually, Abigail, been toying around with the idea of a workout group. Um, and um, that is something that I had thought of because I think I would benefit myself. And I know that a lot of people just want to get in there and practice something, you know? Um, I feel like the only reason why I postponed things is because right now we're kind of in this weird spot where people are out and not on zoom as much anymore and yet they are i don't know it just feels like a weird wishy-washy place right where it's like we're back to kind of in between for a moment everyone was like out and then now everyone's like mm, i don't know so that's why well great i put it in the chat and everyone go follow women in bo and it's all inclusive so there I've met a lot of wonderful people on that because I follow her too and she's lovely thanks and I'm also teaching a class with sound on studio yes um, that's awesome. going to be in September um it was going to be the fourth but then we realized that that was uh um <laughs> that was a holiday weekend so we changed it and I believe uh, it is September I want to say it's the 12th and it's from 10 to 1 p.m. Um, with Sound On Studio. Yeah. And that'll be fun. That's the beginning. Yes. And that's the beginning commercial class. And um, it was fun. It sold out last time. So, um, yes. This yes. Sign up if you want to take it. Everybody has to take it. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for coming and offering this class to everyone. I'm going to pause the recording or stop the recording. And one second.